our relationships must manifest the laws and the lifestyle of our kingdom in the kingdom of God there's no divorce if you are going to have a success relationship in the kingdom of God the most important thing you need is not love write this down love does not keep marriage together stop letting people fool you with love whatever they mean by that don't marry a person because of love are you shocked yet everybody in this room who's been divorced will tell you they began their relationship with what they call love but the love didn't hold out so love doesn't keep it together 95 percent of all the people that i've counseled in my office for the last 30 years with marital problems with the paper in their hand ready to sign it to get a divorce all of them said i still love him but we can't live together i still love her but i can't stand her we are confused the two words don't go together i love you but don't want to live with you what we're saying is my feelings toward this person is intact but my ability to be in the same room is wanting i don't have the skills to live in the same room so don't ever get married because of love i know that sounds strange but that's your problem life is complicated if you abuse the appetite of your stomach and you keep eating things that are not good for your body or eat too much of anything then you literally kick in destruction in your body if you abuse and mismanage the appetite of sex you'll walk around with destruction you have mental memories you wish you could forget psychological problems with 10 people you slept with now you are trying to get rid of their memories or maybe even contracted some disease maybe you are caught up in pornography and and now you try to get married and you want your spouse to do the same things you saw in those pictures you are destroying your marriage it's destructive and so it says if your god is your appetite then destruction is your destiny and their glory is their shame their mind is what on earthly things worldly systems here's what the kingdom says you should get married on found in proverbs chapter 24 verse 3 it says by wisdom a house is built and through what understanding it is established and through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasure now that's an idiom again in hebrew it means it's a nice place to be all the time every room feels like a beautiful place that is lovely you just want to stay home a lot of people who married can't wait to leave home and going home is a stressful experience the next verse says what a wise man has great power and a man of knowledge increases strength when you have wisdom you've got the word power means ability to handle things you can live together effectively if you got what wisdom and then if you got knowledge it says you handle your house with strength you're not afraid you're not weak you know what to do when problems arise i want to break these three words down for you very quickly number one you begin first of all with knowledge knowledge is information if you're going to have a success relationship with anybody i'm not talking about just married people anybody you need to get knowledge you need information Sometimes we encourage you to go buy books and we say go buy this set of CDs and people think we're trying to make money. But you see, those books are 45 years of my life of research and study and living with my wife for 31 years and it costs you 20 bucks. $20 for 40 years of my life, that's cheap. And it could save your life if you read it. But you walk right past the bookstore as if you know everything and you got stress in your marriage. You don't need prayer, you need information. People come to me all the time and say, you know, I'm having problems with my, my relationship. My, my wife, my husband got a problem. Like, can you pray for me? I'm sitting there going, no, I want to give you five books to read. So bad. But I know you are lazy. You know what we want God to do? Work magic. Prayer does not cancel ignorance. No matter how much I pray for you, it doesn't fix your marriage. You need skills. You need knowledge. You need principles. You need to understand human nature. These things got to be learned. The average man in this room knows nothing about women. Guaranteed. I'm still trying to figure out my wife and it's 31 years. So you got to learn. You got to study. And I'm telling you, 
95% of women in this room know nothing about a man. Nothing, I'm telling you. I was talking to a lady the other day and I'm thinking, she doesn't understand her husband. You got to get knowledge. And the next time someone tell you they love you, ask them, how much you know? How many books you read to prepare to talk to me? Because I'm in danger if you are ignorant. Now here's the problem. He's ignorant, you ignorant, and both of you got married. That's a foolish relationship. And then we say what? Forever. We commit forever. Forever? You can last until after the honeymoon night. Then there's going to be some fighting. The second one is what? Understanding. Understanding is comprehension. That means you comprehend the information. This is why I teach so much to you. I don't want you just to hear me. I want you to understand the word of God. Because you cannot do number three if you don't know number two. And number three is wisdom. Wisdom is application. You cannot apply what you do not understand. And you cannot understand what you do not know. Stop trying to make the Holy Ghost your spouse. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. And he will bring to your remembrance the things you learned. Now, this is a problem. I thought the Holy Spirit used to tell me things. I thought he would give me information. That's not what Jesus said. He said he will live in you and he will bring to your remembrance what you learned. So he's down and there looking for stuff to try and solve your problem. He can't find nothing. I can't find no information. But, you know, and here you are, got this problem about to get a divorce. And he said, look, I'm trying to help you, but I can't find nothing. Because you didn't put nothing in here. You cannot apply what you do not understand. And you cannot understand what you do not what? No. Being old doesn't mean you are wise. Being old means you old. That's all. There's some old dumb people. In other words, Age doesn't mean wisdom that is found in Job. The young man who was the one that really got through the Job was the young one who said, I kept quiet because I thought age should speak. He said, but then when I heard the foolishness of the age ones, I decided to speak. And his wisdom was the one that Job listened to. Not because somebody is 42 years old and wink at you. Doesn't mean they are a candidate for marriage. I'm telling you, let me tell you what old people are. They are full of regrets. They call regrets wisdom. You know regret is? An experience you wish you never had. We need to be careful. There's no substitute for knowledge. A lot of people in my experience over the years in relationships got a divorce not because they didn't know. I taught them for years. But they didn't apply. They didn't listen. They didn't use the information properly. That's called foolish. A smoking doctor is a fool. So we need to apply truth. And then write this point down, very important. Truth is literally defined as original information. Now this is very important because sometimes truth becomes very nebulous. We don't understand, you know, when Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What he meant was, I am the way to the original information that gives you life. Truth is always from the source. Anything other than the source is an opinion. Think about it. Here's how cookbooks are laid out. You got the photograph on the right and the recipe on the left. We don't never look at the left. We just look at the picture. We love the picture. The problem is we do the same thing with our relationships. Every woman in this room has in her head the perfect marriage picture. They meet this guy. He's six feet two driving a fantastic BMW. He's walking with a three piece suit with a briefcase. He's making $600,000 a year got a house by the beach down out west and he is sharp and he is proposing to you and you said yes and both of you got married 500 people in attendance every the limousines you got this picture don't you come on say amen don't lie to me and you got this image this photograph in your mind of you going to that church marching up getting married kissing throwing the rice going on honeymoon coming back and getting back to that house having three little kids walking around watering the garden together he's he's painting and you're working and, and the kids are playing around you and you take your evening walks by the beach every evening go jogging in the morning go to work and you have this photograph before you go to bed he kisses you and prays for you that's the cake you're looking at what you don't look at is the other page the picture is the result of a process don't you dare walk down an aisle believing that picture is waiting for you up at that aisle. That could be a nightmare in a suit. That 
picture in that cookbook is a result of a long process. Write this down. The picture is a promise. When you open a cookbook and you look at the picture, the author is promising you something. He's saying, I promise you this picture. If you follow the page you don't like, there are men in this room who got a picture of the perfect wife. Every morning she wakes up, she looks like Queen Esther. He never sees her in rollers. He don't want to see her in no duster, dragging no slippers. He always sees her perfect. He pictures a woman who's waiting at the door when he comes home with the food already ready. He sees her standing there with a modern look like, hi baby, welcome home, hi there. He has this picture of this woman who takes off his shoes from a long day's work and hands him the newspaper and say, baby, go ahead and read while I just heat the food up. He had this photograph in his mind of this woman who just kisses him on the forehead and says, you're such a good man. Thank you for being such a good worker for my kids. He just has a picture of this woman who is always ready for sex all the time. And our problem is we get married to people and we demand the picture. And this person has no idea how to produce that picture for you. Here's why. The key to the cake is two things. The ingredients and the recipe. The recipe is how things should happen in sequence. The ingredients are the components that make up the recipe. All of them are necessary to produce the product. That photograph in your head is complicated. I heard a guy say one time, he said, marriage is wonderful. It's the living together that is hell. And that's what he means. The photograph is beautiful, but the process is not easy. Now, so if you want to have the result, you have to follow the recipe and have the right ingredients. I remember one time I was baking and the cake called for a couple of things I didn't have. When the cake came out, it was hard as rock. It never rose. I became angry at the oven. I became angry at the fire, angry at the kitchen, angry at the pan it was in, angry at the cake. That's what we do. We become angry at the result we're getting, but not taking responsibility for what we failed to put in. There was nothing wrong with that recipe. I decided to put in what I feel like and ignored the manufacturer. And that's what we keep doing with relationships. So relationships are just like cakes. They are only as good as the ingredients. Write this down. If you want the cake, you must follow the recipe. And you must use the ingredients specified by the recipe. If your cake is salty, don't blame the cake. Cakes don't put salt in themselves. If your relationship ain't working out, don't blame your spouse. There's something you ain't putting in either. And you see, sometimes we marry folks who don't know nothing about cakes. They don't know what they're doing. They just like you. It is better to be happy alone than to be depressed in a prison called a relationship. The cake is a result of putting different ingredients together in one place. That's the cake. So the cake is nothing more than the ingredients. The heat, Lord have mercy, is the world you live in, the pressure you under. The stress that life brings and the heat when the heat is on you're supposed to turn into a nice cake in other words when the life hits you you ain't supposed to collapse and fall apart the pressure is supposed to make you into a beautiful result that's the heat of life but if you don't have the right ingredients the heat will turn you into a dumb bread nobody wants to eat you Nobody wants to learn from you. Nobody wants to follow you. They can't even enjoy you because you are not tasteful. Your rooms are not wonderful treasure. So when you meet somebody and they claim they have an interest, study what kind of ingredient they are. And that may take you two years to figure out at least 10%. Because everybody is lie when they like you. Let me say it again. When people like you, they lie. That's why when you find someone who is in you, put them on trial. I don't trust you yet, I can put you on trial. Now, when somebody's on trial, they make the worst witness. Anybody who was on trial should not be the, the, the witness because they're gonna defend themselves. I, my feet, I never stink. My breath is always sweet. They're gonna lie. So what do you do? You bring other witnesses who know them to testify on their behalf. Bring their mother, 
talk to the mother talk to the father talk to the sister who slept with her for 20 years in the house talk to the brother who knows him very well that's who you talk to you don't talk to the person our problem is we keep talking to the person i love you i love you too you there yeah i still there it's two o'clock i know but i don't want to hang up yet this is not courtship this is manipulation please make a note of this very important the most important relationship in life is not interpersonal relationship but it's what intra personal relationship it's more important for you to know yourself than to know other people you don't need another person in your life yet you need you in your life first the average person don't know who they are themselves so you need to really develop a relationship with the most important person in your life and it's you a lot of people like to be with people because they don't want to be with themselves if you are the worst company to you why should you want me to be with you let me say it again if you don't like you why do you want me to like you if you can't stand being with you why do you want me to be with you forever this is why a person who is a good person to marry is somebody who ain't interested this is why i tell people if someone say to you i need you run run as fast as you can they're about to become a parasite we walk around you know talking i need you that's a serious thing can you imagine telling someone that you telling them that they control you you don't want no one around you like a leech sucking your life out of you sucking on you sucking everything out of you you want somebody who can give life to you share and this is why we got so much stress in our relationships people walk around because they don't like themselves so they like to be with you all the time where you go in where you go in again you know what time it is you gain again where you go in you don't got to wait every night where you go in. if you enjoy yourself by yourself take yourself for lunch and tell them you want a table with one chair what makes you attractive is the fact that you are lovable and your love is shown by your love for yourself know yourself get to fall in love with yourself then i believe i could stay with you let me give you another thought the most important person you should desire to know is yourself we try to spend time getting to know people and we never know who we are Know your idiosyncrasies, know your weaknesses, know your strength, know your purpose, know your, your mission in life, know your dreams, know your vision, know what your assignment is in life, know yourself. Because knowledge of self will determine how you choose relationships. If I know where I want to go in life, I know who I don't want to be with. If I know what my vision is, I know who can help me get there. So knowing yourself regulates who you allow into your life at different levels you know there's some folks who will come into your life and kill your dream some of you all got a big dream and tell you meet a bum it's incredible we don't know who we are so we pick up anybody choose your relationships based on your destination not everybody who smiles at you and say they love you is a blessing and some of you have experienced this. I, I, I know it's, it's, it's rough to deal with these kind of subjects, but you know, some of you have been through divorce, you're looking back and you go, man, oh boy, it was too late. When I discovered this person didn't have what I have as far as passion and dreams, they didn't have the same passion for life. But you know, God is a good God. He's a God of second chances. You can start again after you get knowledge, of course, coming to BFM, and then you do it right. And believe me, the more knowledge you get, the more difficult it is to find somebody let me say it slow the more knowledge you get the more difficult it is to find somebody because you got sense now some of you are saying pastor Mars, i can't find no one to marry i don't blame you i know it's tough and some folks have given in and they regret it when you lower your standard you can never lift it up again that's tough because sometimes you begin to get desperate and then you start thinking well you know i need to do something fast and believe me fast is right fast food is always cheap self-knowledge is the key to all relationships all of them not just marriage when you know yourself you also know who you should associate with even as associates you need to know who you're supposed to be with who will be a contribution to your life i can't keep company with every pastor some of them can't dream what i'm dreaming and think like i think so i can't keep company with them maybe we, we are acquainted and we you know we, we we talk but as far as friends and there are some people who I will never be around for more than five minutes. They're too negative. I'm a positive man. I got big dreams for God. I know where I'm going in life and I ain't got time to waste time with you trying to abort my dream. So I choose my friends based on my destiny. I know myself. So I choose my relationship based on who I know I am and what I want to achieve in life. You should never just hang out. 
You got to choose where you want to go first. Then choose those associations that can get you there. Here's a verse that we probably misunderstand. Matthew chapter 22. The key to self-love is loving God with your soul, your mind, your strength. Why? When you study God, investigate God, get to know God's quality, His nature, all of His characteristics, guess what? You discover yourself. Because you are also in God's image. So you begin to find out who you are when you study God. And you fall in love with yourself because the goodness you see in God, you see in yourself. That's why I love myself so much. It's too late. No matter what you think about me, I love me. Okay, get over it. I'm not boasting. I love me. Your opinions doesn't touch my love for me. Because I am made in God's image. And I'm just like my father. I have his nature, his qualities, his characteristics. I have his worth. I am just like my father God. I know who I am. You can never touch the value I have on my life. Now, why is that important? He says, because I can only love you to the same degree I love me. The principle here is this. It is more important to love you than to love me. And that's your problem. Don't just learn truth. You have to apply it. And if you're going to be successful in life, you must apply the truth.